Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we know how to take the integral or how to find the integral of the secant of x, we're now ready to solve this integral. The integral of dx divided by the square root of x squared plus a squared. And you'll see in just a moment why it's important to know how to integrate the secant of x. Well, first of all, we need to find the relationships. Do some trick substitutions here. And notice if we draw a triangle, we call that x, we call this a. The hypotenuse will then be the square root of x squared plus a squared. Here's the angle theta. And we can see that the tangent of theta will be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, or x will be equal to a times the tangent of theta. If we now take the derivative of that, we write dx d theta, that will be equal to a times the secant square of theta. So dx will be equal to a times the secant square of theta times d theta, which takes care of the numerator of the integral, but not yet the denominator because we have to replace this. So what we can do there is we can say, well, the cosine of x, or the cosine of theta, I should say, by definition is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. That would be a divided by the square root of x squared plus a squared. Okay, and then if we take the secant, that would be the inverse of the cosine, uh, that would be the secant of theta, which is equal to the inverse of the cosine, which is equal to the square root of x squared plus a squared divided by a. I think now we have a way to get there. So I'm going to substitute for the numerator. This is equal to the integral of, instead of dx, we're going to write a times the secant squared of theta d theta divided by the denominator. And the denominator can now be written as a times the secant of theta. So a times the secant of theta. And notice that the a's cancel out and I have one secant here, one secant there. So this becomes equal to the integral of the secant of theta times d theta. So it all came down to knowing how to integrate the secant of theta to find the integral of this. And if we remember right, that is equal to the natural log of, and let's see, that would be the secant, yes, that would be the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta. And we're going to get a constant of integration. I'm going to call it C1. You'll see in just a moment why we call it C1. Well, that's not the final answer yet because this is in terms of theta and I need the answer in terms of x. So I need to reverse back. How can I do that? Well, first of all, I can see that the secant of theta can be written as this. So then I'm going to substitute for the secant of theta and the tangent of theta what I know it's equal to in terms of x. So this cannot be written as the natural log of Instead of the secant of theta, we're going to write it as the square root of x squared plus a squared over a, plus, instead of the tangent of theta, we can write it as x over a, plus a constant of integration. Now, let's see here. I can write this over a common denominator. So I can write it as follows. This is equal to the natural log of the square root of x squared plus a squared plus x squared, all divided by a. And now notice that I have the natural log of the numerator divided by the denominator. So I can write that as two separate natural logs, one subtracted from the other. So this can now be written as the natural log of the square root of x squared plus a squared plus x squared minus the natural log of the denominator a plus a constant of integration. And then notice that a is simply just a constant, so the natural log of a would be a constant. I can combine those two together and then simply write this as the natural log of what I have over here, which is the square root of x squared plus a squared plus, oops, that should be x squared plus a constant of integration by combining those two constants. So essentially, 
the integral of, the, of dx divided by the square root of x squared plus a squared can be written as that. And that's how it's done.